Let's get the ball rolling again. Elon Musk just gave the world new information regarding the SpaceX Starship test that will take place this week to determine if it's ready for a long-haul flight for its Mars mission. And they are proceeding very carefully. The company has been slowly testing B7 for a couple of months, beginning in April. Only in early August did the company cautiously begin attempting to ignite their Raptor engines as part of a process known as static fire testing, which is by far the most difficult and important part of qualifying both vehicles for flight. Thanks to progress made in 2021, SpaceX already has significant experience testing an earlier Orbital-class Starship prototype on the ground. However, the process of testing Ship 24 is still fresh and unfamiliar for a number of reasons. For B7, the challenges are even greater. On top of major design changes made to Starship and Super Heavy over the last year as SpaceX continues to refine the rocket, the company also developed a substantially different version of its Raptor engine. Compared to Raptor version 1, Raptor 2 almost looks like a new engine and can produce around 25% more thrust, which is 230 tons versus 185 tons of the previous version. SpaceX also tweaked how the engine operates, particularly around startup and shutdown, further weakening the value of past experience testing Raptor 1 and 1.5 engines on Ship 20 and Boosters 3 and 4. In other words, with Ship 24 and B7 engine testing, it's possible that SpaceX is is effectively starting from scratch. Many aspects of testing, such as propellant conditioning, thermal characteristics, tanking, detanking, and certain test stands, are likely mostly unchanged, but almost every aspect of a rocket is affected by its engines. Before SpaceX began testing Raptor 2 engines on Starship and booster prototypes, it wasn't clear if the changes between 1.5 and 2 would invalidate a lot of prior testing. After the start of B7 and Ship 24 static fire testing, it's now clear that a lot of that earlier work has to be redone. It's also clear that despite some of the simplifications in Raptor 2's design, operating the engine on Super Heavy is much harder to get right. Since mid-July, SpaceX has completed a series of Spin Prime tests on Booster 7, which was more than any other prototype in the history of Starbase has performed. Spin Prime tests flow high-pressure gas through Raptor's pumps to spin them up without igniting anything. It's unclear why so many of these tests are being done, what SpaceX is gaining from it, or why the company appears to have completely stopped conducting pre-burner tests, which is a more lifelike spin prime with partial combustion. Regardless, eight weeks after the start of the engine testing, B7 has only performed three static fires, two with one engine, and one with a max of three engines back in August. Almost six weeks after SpaceX began Super Heavy Booster 7's static fire test campaign, the company has broken new ground by simultaneously igniting seven Raptor engines at once for about five seconds on the 19th of September. No obvious issue arose and Musk later implied that the test went well. It set a new record for the largest number of Raptors simultaneously ignited on a single prototype and likely also broke the record for most thrust produced by a vehicle tested at Starbase. However, before this vehicle can be considered ready for flight, which may be a day that could easily never come, it will likely need to conduct multiple successful static fires with all of its Raptor engines. For Booster 7 and its near-term successors, that means 33 new Raptor 2 engines capable of generating a total of around 7,600 metric tons of thrust, which will almost certainly make it the most powerful liquid rocket ever tested. Even if all 33 engines never reach more than 60% of their maximum thrust of 230 tons, they will likely break the Soviet N-1 rocket's record of 4,500 tons of thrust at sea level. It would also be the most rocket engines ever simultaneously ignited on one vehicle. SpaceX will be pushing the envelope by several measures, and success is far from guaranteed. Thus, it would need to be careful to avoid another incident or explosion, as Musk claimed, that it might set them back approximately six months if it fails again. RUDs, or Rapid Unscheduled Disassembly, may also take place if any booster fails or explodes, as well as any other parts of the rocket that may need to have any service to ensure its safety and success. The most significant setback for the company this year was Booster 7's explosion from its test earlier in the year and SpaceX wants to avoid this incident from ever happening again. So, one or several more tests will also be required if SpaceX decides to gradually build up to 33 engines, which is the approach that all Booster 7 activity to date suggests SpaceX will take. SpaceX has requested permission for road closures, 
each a potential 12-hour test window on October 19th and the 20th. The company cannot afford any unfortunate events now, especially as it aims to deliver the Starship as early as possible to fulfill its needs for the future missions it plans for the rocket. Of course, in addition to completing testing and getting Super Heavy ready to go, SpaceX needs a launch license from the FAA before it can launch Starship. So ultimately, all eyes are on the FAA, which gave SpaceX a tentative approval when the launch plan passed a key environmental review back in June. But with 75 required changes to the mission profile that need to be completed before the license is handed over. When Starship and Super Heavy finally launch together, the test flight will send the former for a brief trip to orbit, followed by a splashdown off the coast of Hawaii while Super Heavy comes in for a landing attempt on a modified oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico. Back in August, Elon Musk claimed that an actual launch and mission would take place in 1-12 to 12 months, since Starship's return to its launch pad, which will help propel the rocket for its future missions. The Starship is looking to develop its mission at a rapid pace, and the company is not wasting any time in getting it ready for its launch. And once SpaceX achieves success on launches, it will soon embark on its mission and may replace the Falcon 9 for its needs. This vehicle is designed to deliver satellites further and at a lower marginal cost per launch than our current Falcon vehicles. With a payload compartment larger than any fairing currently in operation or development, Starship creates possibilities for new missions including space telescopes even larger than the James Webb. Starship's future is already partially mapped out. Firstly, NASA picked SpaceX to deliver Artemis astronauts to the surface of the moon. But also, billionaire entrepreneur Yusaku Maezawa intends to be on board for a Starship trip around the moon in 2023. And finally, space tourism pioneer Dennis Tito also signed up to take a Starship around the moon on a different voyage. All that starts with the Starship getting into orbit, and hopefully, returning safely to Earth. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.